I call to order the meeting of the Common Council for Tuesday, January 18th, 2022. Clerk? Yes, thank you, Honor. We have 12 present in the meeting and 12 voting in civic clerk. All right, thank you, Clerk. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation offered by Alderman John Vanderlees. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States, United States of America, America to the Republic, Republic and for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God with indivisible justice and liberty and justice for all. Alderman Vanderlees, any words for us? your blessing upon our city council, upon each city employee. I, I pray, Lord, that you uh, that you touch the ones, Lord, that are in ill health. And I, I pray, Lord, that you specialize in, in, in things that are thought impossible, Lord. And, and some of these people need miracles, Lord, in, in their health conditions. So we ask this in your name. And, and Lord, I pray that you'd protect each of our city employees. Watch over each one, Lord. And, and I just pray that 2022 will be a good year for safety and, and for protection for each one and that we can just say that it was a banner year. We ask in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Alderman. Approval of the minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Motion was made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Gerlach to approve uh, the minutes from our December 21st, 2021 council meeting. Any corrections there? Seeing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Well, nay. The ayes have it. Those minutes are approved. Approval of the agenda. Motion to approve. Second. 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 To approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax. Any changes? <clears throat> Seeing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Well, aye. Nay. The ayes have it. The agenda is approved. Report by the mayor. Um, just a, a quick comment on one item that's before us this evening, uh, the resolution welcoming our new neighbors from Afghanistan to this community. Um, wanted to thank Alder Dorf for bringing this forward initially, um, Alder Gerlach for her work on this as well, um, in tandem with um, chair of our PNP Protection Policy Committee, uh, Alder Stoyer. Um, you know, the city of Green Bay, I think, has a long and proud history as being a, a welcoming community, uh, welcoming refugees from um, from Vietnam, the Hmong population, um, as well as uh, recent refugees from Somalia, uh, Congolese refugees, and, and really refugees from, from all over the world. Um, so this is another example of Green Bay opening our arms, our community um, to these recent arrivals. And um, so, you know, I, I feel strongly that this is a mission that we are called to play as a community, um, one where we handle uh, in spite of challenges that inevitably will be faced by the refugees and, and by us in, in meeting some of their needs. Um, but really want to thank our alders for working on this and, uh, and most importantly, to thank um, the agencies who are engaged in this work. Our council president, Alder Burnett, um, and, and his day job is, is working diligently on some of these tasks. So appreciate his work as well as the work of the entire organization um, and look forward to great things um, from this, this new population. And, um, and so thanks again for Alders for taking this on. Um, thanks uh, to our agencies who are engaged in this work. And, uh, and we offer these refugees from Afghanistan a, a warm welcome on the part of the city, um, hoping that we'll, we'll see approval on that resolution this evening. Uh, so with that, we'll move along to announcements. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Alder Scannell and then Alder Lefebvre. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just uh, this Friday at 3.30 downtown by Cherry and Adam uh, in Washington there. Come on down and cheer on the pack. Go Pack Go. It's uh, Let's see what happens Saturday. But this Friday, there will be a rally downtown starting at 3.30. Absolutely. I'll be there. Uh, Alder, are you going to be wearing that that hat? It's not a Packer hat, so I don't know. We, I don't know. Maybe I can get away with it. We'll see. You, you should think about it. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Alder. Alder Lefebvre? Um, yes. Thank you, Mayor. Um, 
Yes, I just wanted to uh, remind people to please, please check your wards in your districts. As our districts have changed, so have our wards. Um, I had four wards, they went down to three. And then the, the papers had uh, different articles and it, to me, I found it very confusing. So I met twice with um, Clerk Jeffries going over things and I also went over to the county, uh, talked to the county clerk and the planning and tried to get maps and make sure that my district, I can un I, I can understand so that my voters can understand where they're going to vote. Because, you know, this is the third change for voting in two years. And people are, it's going to be confusing for people if we keep changing. So we have to be aware of this. And I hope everybody, you know, really checks it out and gets out there. Um, some have a primary come up in February, which is coming up very quick. But um, please check into that. And then, and I hope it's okay. Um, there was an article in the Press Gazette today. Um, it said, Wisconsin deaths related to alcohol rose almost 25% in 2020. Um, released by the nonpartisan Wisconsin Policy Forum. Um, deaths by alcohol poisoning and liver death, uh, disease uh, was only reported in this. It said nothing about um, drunk driving and accidents. Um, Marine Busalachi, Wisconsin Alcohol po uh, Policy Project housed within the Medical College of Wisconsin stated it does not surprise her and said legislative policies meant to expand access to alcohol may have opened the door. It didn't happen by accident. Uh, 2021 bill signed by the governor um, Evers that allows bars and restaurants to start selling wine and cocktails to go. That runs counter to recommendations in a 2020 brief from the Wisconsin Department of Health and Human Services to make alcohol less, it's less, not more, readily available. Uh, and another one of the recommendations is reducing hours for sales of alcohol and curbing the amount of liquor licenses that municipalities issue. I was just wondering, what are we doing? Well, we passed that where they can take out these drinks out of restaurants and bars. We also allowed uh, drive up uh, dispensing of alcohol from uh, grocery stores. And there's other things that we allowed to c continue. We're not doing anything. We have not trying to solve this problem. Alcohol is invasive is so overwhelming in our community. And I think that we need to step up. We gotta start realizing there is a problem. There's been a problem for years. We're burying our head in the sand. We even had an alder and we allowed the uh, grocery stores to have drive up alcohol sales. It's the wave of the future. I'm sorry, that's not the future that I want. I'm not a teetotaler, I'll, I'll tell you that. but. We have to be responsible as alders for this city on this issue. I think we have to start taking seriously. Please, please, let's do it. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Uh, Alder Brunette. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. I just want to thank you for those kind words uh, directed towards all those who are working very hard with refugee resettlement. Okay. It is true, I've had the privilege uh, and honor of being able to work in my day job in regards to placement. And, and I'll tell you, as in my experience, and I say this not necessarily in my position as a council member, but as a member of uh, an employer who's working hard resettling, that the response from the city of Green Bay has been overwhelmingly positive from landlords to businesses who are looking to employ our new guests to uh, the school district and hospitals. It's really a, it's a community effort and it's just wonderful to see from the position that I get to serve the uh, warm outpouring of support we have received from the community and members of the community looking to volunteer so that our, our newest arrivals are welcomed warmly and are successful in their new lives in Green Bay. So I just wanted to recognize you and thank you for those kind comments and your support the cause over the last several months. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Alder. 
Any additional announcements from council? All right, with that, we'll move on to appointments, new appointments. Move approve. Second. Second. Motion to approve the new appointments made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Gerlach. Any comments here? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. You guys have it. Those new appointments are confirmed. And then we have one reappointment. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Discussion here. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it, and that appointment has been confirmed. Ordinance is second reading for adoption. Motion to suspend the rules. Second. second. Motion to suspend the rules and take up these ordinances with one roll call vote was made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Lefebvre. Any commentary on that? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it, the rules are suspended. Motion to adopt. Second. Motion to adopt these ordinances made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax. Any discussion? Board. Thank you, Alder, you may vote. All right, and those ordinances are adopted 12 0. On to our first committee, um, taking up committee the whole first, and this is um, this is a new experience for us. Um, just to, to let the, the public know, we have an appeal by Steve Olson. Excuse me, on the denial of a certificate of appropriateness at 137 North Oakland Avenue. This item was denied at the meeting of the Landmarks Commission November 17, 2021. Um, and I'm going to go to Attorney Bungert to give us a little bit of an overview of what this process should look like. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Um, to just kind of give an overview of how this process is going to go. Um, it, it is um, a quasi-judicial hearing, so we're going to treat it as such and follow those procedures. Um, it is the goal of council to essentially provide and conduct a hearing that is fair in form, appearance, and substance. So uh, first thing on the agenda to make sure that the, that the hearing satisfies these goals, uh, each member um, individually should um, confirm, uh, each member, I should say, of council should confirm that um, you do not have an interest or a conflict of interest in the matter and that you haven't received any communications from any person or party about this matter. Um, at this point, um, th this would be the time to make a point of order um, to voice any such conflict um, for the record. Okay, and conflicts among our council? All right, hearing none, uh, we can... Thank just uh, just a request to make sure everybody is is muted. Perfect. All right. Hearing no conflicts, we can proceed um, to verify notice. The appellant uh, if for this hearing has received proper notice of today's proceedings. Um, just wanted to confirm with the clerk whether the appellant is present. <laughs> uh, Director Hronick, it looks like all. Yep. Okay. All there is muted. Clerk Jeffries, uh, are you able to confirm whether the, the appellant is present? Oh, I do not see Mr. Olson present. Um, okay. In the meeting, in the Zoom meeting, but perhaps he is um, present as someone else. So I see a J and a, a K. So, um, Mr. Olson, if you are present in the meeting, can you yourself? Alder Corpus X? Alder Corpus X? Um, thank you, Mayor. It's really hard to hear. Clerks. Is anyone else having this issue? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, it, it is pretty quiet. Um, Clerk Jeffries, if you could just scoot me. Uh, I think I, I think I'm having that issue again. Now, can you hear me? Yes. yes thank you. Oh, darn it. Okay. Yes, I'm having an issue with my microphone. Um, so sorry. Thank you for pointing that out, Alder Corpus Dax. 
So uh, what I was saying, uh, Attorney Bunker and Your Honor, I do not see Steve Olson in the meeting, but that doesn't mean he's not here. I do see if Senator Olson, if you're in the meeting, can you unmute yourself and please let us know that you are present for this hearing? Mr. Olson, are you in attendance for this hearing? Doesn't appear as though he is attending. Attorney Bungert, can you address the fact that, that he yes. may not be so, Yes, so uh, if he is not uh, present for the hearing, we can still proceed um, in, in the review of the appeal. Essentially, counsel is um, going to be considering what has been admitted into um, evidence and into the record um, that's part of the council's um, agenda packet and then whatever additional testimony is presented by the parties. Um, and then um, the, the decision um, will be made based on um, what is in the record. Um, so if the appellant did not uh, appear and provide additional testimony or evidence, um, the council is limited to what has been presented. So we can continue. Um, the council will either announce its decision tonight uh, or as far as um, uh, entering uh, its findings of fact and conclusions of law um, or take the matter under advisement and then have a decision at the next council meeting. Um, and the findings of fact and conclusions of law uh, will be based upon the record before it. This time, the following evidence is being submitted into the record, which would be an appeal memo that was prepared by staff um, for the Landmarks Commission background information along with a staff report and photos of the subject property um, with all of the relevant um, information uh, regarding the matter. Um, as I stated before, staff and appellant do have an opportunity to present evidence, including testimony. The evidence uh, needs to be credible, relevant, and probative. Uh, the time limit would be uh, 10 minutes for uh, initial arguments and five minutes for a rebuttal. Uh, or closing statements. Uh, the council can ask questions of party of both parties at any time during or after the presentation um, of testimony and evidence. The appellant would uh, typically present first uh, after a motion to open the floor, followed by uh, the city and staff, um, and this would repeat for any rebuttals. Any evidence presented uh, would need to be admitted into evidence by motion. Uh, once testimony is concluded, council will then uh, need to move into closed session to deliberate. Once back in open session, the committee will state its findings of fact and conclusions of law, um, and then make a motion on the appeal, um, or at that point, uh, direct staff um, as instructed in closed session and uh, take the, um, the matter under advisement and issue their findings of fact at a later date. And that concludes my housekeeping. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you for that overview. Sure. Attorney Bunger, um, at this time, since we don't have the appellant, um, would it be appropriate for staff to present their side of things? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Ms. Hummel. Thank you, Mayor. Um, everyone, I'm Stephanie Hummel. I've worked with most of you, but I am a planner in the um, Community and Economic Development Department. I work as a staff person for the Landmarks Commission. Um, there are some them in the packet that you've received about the commission itself, but just a general overview. It used to be the Historic Preservation Commission that was disbanded and reformed as the Landmarks Commission in 2018. Since then, we've approved 140 COAs, 140 plus, and we've only had two denials in our history. Um, one of those denials, we worked with the applicants to rework their application to be within the confines of our municipal code. The next, the second one is here, um, going for an appeal. So the property at, in question is 137 North Oakland. It's in our Oakland Walnut um, Historic District, which is Alder Johnson's district. Alder Sawyer does sit on our Landmarks Commission, so he's pretty familiar with this case. Um, there was some storm damage in summer of 2021 that caused the front balcony of a historic property to be damaged. One of my coworkers and I worked with our inspection department to verify with the property owner that they need both both permits and a certificate of appropriateness since it's a historic structure. Um, we get, had some leniency with him as he was working with his insurance agency um, to get that repair done, but we had sent several reminders which are noted in the packet that was presented to you all. Um, the uh, property owner ended up 
in remit or a certificate of appropriateness. Um, once we saw that that had occurred, we had sent out notices on both the building inspection side and from the Landmarks Commission stating that you need to take action to submit these applications within seven days. Um, that did not happen, but he did submit within the month and it was on our Landmarks Commission agenda for November 17th of last year. At that meeting, um, the application was discussed. Um, what was presented was were our staff recommendation, which was who is our contract historic preservation specialist in our department. Um, with that, we use the Green Bay Municipal Code, which has a preservation section, and then also the um, Secretary of the Interior Standards, which are noted within our Municipal Code as reference. So based off of both of those things, our staff recommendation was to deny this application. Um, since it was already installed, it is considered work done without a COA. Um, that has a separate set of parameters that states that we should be working with them to try to adjust whatever they've already installed to try to make it compliant with our code and with the Secretary of the Interior Standards. Um, with the COA being denied, that denial was state this is inappropriate for this historic structure and as part of the historic district that it's detr detrimental to that historic fabric. And then also that we would have that ability then to work with the applicant to try to make whatever was already installed applicable to those codes or to remove and work with them on an application to install something else. Um, instead of going that route, the property owner wanted to appeal decision here. Um, in your packet, you can see the photos of what was um, already installed. So that's active right now on that home. We are recommending with that denial that that be removed or altered so that way it's more fitting with the, the historic nature of the home. Um, within our the legal memo that was provided, it discusses pretty thoroughly some of the design features that were really inappropriate for this home. The initial design of the home had a very low profile vertical balcony. What is installed can only be described as a backyard deck. It has four by four posts, it's lifted off, it's very, very horizontal or very vertical in nature, not horizontal as was originally proposed. So this was unanimously denied by our Landmarks Commission. Our commission has someone in the construction field, we have a registered architect, we have our alder, we have a lot of people who work within the field of preservation and construction. Um, so we're pretty confident in this denial that it is very inappropriate for the district and for this home itself. All right, thank you, Ms. Hummel, for that presentation. Um, Attorney Bungert, would it be appropriate to entertain questions from counsel at this point? Yes, that would be appropriate. Okay, and then just one other housekeeping question. You might have covered this and might have missed it. Um, are, are we required to go into closed session to deliberate, or if someone has a motion, are they free to to make that on the on the appeal? The the recommendation should be to go into closed session okay. so that the findings of fact and conclusions of law can be reviewed um, and determined um, and either approved for tonight or deferred um, to staff to bring back. Um, okay. So that that motion into closed session still needs to needs to move forward. Okay, sounds good. So we did have a couple questions. I think Alder Stoyer might have been first. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, like it was stated, I, I do sit on the Landmarks Commission. Uh, we have okayed over 140 certificates of appropriateness over time, and this is just one of the two that have been denied. Uh, if you do, if you drive by that building, I think just this, um, it just doesn't. It to me, it does not look right, as as uh, Stephanie Hummel mentioned. Um, the owner did have a chance to work with the city on this, and fa fact, I I have an understanding that they that he did another attempt at a certificate in a previous project. So he was. He was Alder, uh, I'm sorry. Um, I, maybe I should have clarified this a little bit. The, okay. the, the point at this point just needs to be questions for questions. the person that was All presenting right. testimony. All right. Um, All right. Any additional statements um, or anything okay. um, that that you want to have discussed can happen in closed right. session. Um, okay, thank it, you. It, it, All right, right. Then I guess my sorry. question. That's fine. Thank you. I guess my question would be to Stephanie then, or or to Jason Flat, who is here as well. Uh, did this? Uh, did Mr. Olson? Uh, apply for another certificate of appropriateness at another time so that they kind of knew the process 
to begin with? There was no, yeah. okay. There was a COA on file for that address by Mr. Olson um, in 2018. Okay. And according to your testimony, it sounds like that you did due diligence with the city on the city end to with the inspection department, also with the Landmarks Commission, that, that this person was aware of the process, so to speak, and, and went ahead in your estimation without, without any of that. Yes, uh, there is a timeline that is detailed in one of the attachments that has all of the communication between myself and the applicant. Um, I believe there was additional communication between our inspection division and the applicant, but I only um, put in what I had contact with. Okay. Well, that's all I have for now. I guess I'll, I'll save for uh, close. Thanks, Alder. Thanks Mayor. Alder LaFave and then Alder Johnson. Um, yes. Uh, looking at the photos here, um, it looks like way back uh, was the the height of the uh, the porch railing, you know, the whole porch part. It, was it to code back then? But now the code changes, so it'd be a little higher. Maybe uh, that one looks a little different from the one, the white one here closer up. Is that the replacement of the original backaways? <laughs> Sure. From <laughs> our the photos, right? <laughs> yeah. From what we can tell from our estimation, the um, the original when it was first built, the balcony ledge was very short. Um, it was very okay. um, the the entire design of it was very horizontal. You know, it stretched. It was more expansive on the front of the building. When it was listed, which is what we go off of in preservation world, that's like the, the determining factor for um, appropriateness is that first photo from 1988. That's when it was listed on the National Register for Historic Places. And that shows a balcony that is slightly taller, but is still fairly horizontal, you know, covers the front of the, the facade fairly well. Um, between 1988 and then sometime recently-ish, um, there was the addition of what you can see the before storm damage photo where it has a little bit of a taller railing on it. Um, you know, if these were to code, I'm not sure. We don't have that kind of research abilities to figure out when those things were switched out, what the code was at that time, but pres presumably it was functioning fine before a tree fell on it. Um, and then from there, you know, the the what was installed maybe to code we don't know because the building permit also still has not been submitted so i don't have dimensional information on what was built um but there are some leniencies that were allowed with rebuilding on historic structures you know it depends if people have access to that porch you know when it was originally constructed there was it was a no access balcony you'd have to climb through a window to get to it throughout time that's that's more if the house has changed with ownership um but there are different like levels that we are able to um, allow for railings on historic structures. Yeah, I I would say I, I do like the form uh, damage <clears throat> photo looks very appropriate. Yeah, I think that would have been a good one replacement. But yeah, you're right. The other one is, does not look appropriate. And just a reminder for Alders just to stick to questions at this stage. Uh, Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Stephanie, when, when we look at it, the historic district, it's my understanding, I believe, that there are 20 contributing properties, two non-contributing properties to that historic district. Is that accurate? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and so if, uh, just understanding a, a scenario perhaps where the, the, um, the appellant's uh, request is upheld, would that make their property a non, does it automatically convert it to a non-contributing property? No, there is no automatic um, addition or removal from the National Register without a survey being done, which is being done right now, a survey update. Um, I think Jason Fleck would probably speak a little more eloquently to this, but um, what they're looking at is how much deterioration happens on each property within the district. Considering this is such a small district, this would be a very large piece of that puzzle. So if one contributing property loses its contribution to the district, if there's only 20 there, that could be a very fatal move for the district. However, we don't make those decisions. That is through the State Historic Preservation Office. They do the, the listing and the survey work. So um, I don't know if Jason wanted to expand on that, but I think that's my general understanding. This wouldn't automatically pull it, but it would definitely be one of those death by a thousand cuts. 
Okay. And is there, um, is there like a, a tipping point within that formula? Like do, I mean, is it, is the establishment of historic district based on the number of contributing properties or how does, how does that work? Certainly not. Um, it's by the historical integrity of the properties that are within a certain area. So it's based on, it could be architecture, which this district is based off of, um, you know, different things that are historic to local entities, um, things that happened at the structure. So for districts, there's not a certain kicker. There's not a certain number that gets you in or out. Um, it's just based on the architecture of the neighborhood and then trying to make a district out of that neighborhood fabric. Okay, so so if in fact the, the installed uh, deck that's there right now, if that were to remain intact, it, it's your belief that that would put uh, the preservation of the historic district in jeopardy? Yes, that is my opinion. Okay, thank you. Oh, what, one more, sorry. Uh, was the property, uh, do we still have funding, I guess, available? I think it, what's it called? The Historic Preservation Revolving Loan Fund, is that correct? Yes, that's yeah. still available and available to this property owner. Okay, perfect, thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any other questions in open session, Alder Scannell? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I noticed in the in the packet, there's a lot of documentation, but I, unless I missed it somehow, I didn't see anything from Mr. Olson. I'm wondering if staff in there have any indication from him as to why he proceeded as he proceeded. I cannot speak to that. He has not supplied anything for this appeal. He did not supply anything for the COA application, nor did he attend the Landmarks Commission meeting either. So I don't really have a good grasp on what the intention was here, other than I want to put this up. So that's all that I can speak to on that. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any other questions, Alder Galvin, and then Alder Lefebvre for a second time? Some questions. How many letters were sent to this individual? In total? Yes. Mm. At least four. And that's not counting emails. Okay, so four letters. No responses to any of those letters? No. Okay. Um, have, have we had any contact with them by phone or in person with inspectors or anything? I don't know how Mike has been dealing with him from our inspection division. Um, I know that he's stopped at the property numerous times, so I know he's spoken to him in person about this issue. I have not spoken to him in person. I have called with no response, and the email responses I've received have only been to submit the COA application. All right, and inspectors haven't given us any input into uh, anything he said if they have had contact with him? Uh, no, they just have continually reminded him of what needs to be applied for for this project. Okay, I mean, because to me going forward, it, it'd be nice to have as much information as possible if we're being asked to make a decision on these things. You know, was he, was he combative? Was he resistant? Is he destitute? Um, he just doesn't care about rules. I mean, these are kind of the things that help me make a decision as I go forward. Um, so he, he never got the permits, either building permits or COA. Um, if he were to paint this porch a nice white color like the old one, would that change anything at all about this porch? No, the, the design of it is still very inappropriate for the district. I would say at minimum, it needs to be painted. The, the harsh wood is very inappropriate for historic districts. That's one of the main things that we have people do when they install new wood structures. It has to be painted within a year. Okay, with looking at the old pictures, uh, and it appears to be two different types of porches at one time uh, were on there. One that was damaged, one before that. If the porch was to, uh, the, the sides of the porch were to follow the angle of the roof like on the old ones, and if there was not to be that uh, buildup underneath the front of the porch as we see on the new one, if he just had the rails that he has right now and everything else with, and it was painted white, would that be make it, in your opinion, you think it would be appropriate or at least be good enough to consider for appropriateness? Um, I would like Jason Flatt to answer that question. He is more of an architecture expert than I am. Um, okay. So I believe that he is in Burris currently. Yeah, he's uh, just off to my right here. Jason, could you please answer that question? I, Mr. Flatt. I can, can you hear me? <laughs> yep. Yes. 
Excellent. So you're asking if the railings were were painted white and modified if, in a certain if way? If the sides of the railing, you know, the sides of the porch railings sure. were to follow the angle of the roof like the original ones mm -hmm. did, and then if you were to paint what's there white, would that be, or would it be considered appropriate? So I can't really speak on behalf of the members of the Landmarks Commission. Right. They I would have to evaluate your, that. Right. What's unique in this case is that we had architectural plans from the designers as that house was built. We, we know what it looks like originally, and that could have been reproduced probably at equal cost to what's here. So now we're considering can what's been built be made to more closely resemble what it should have been when the house was built, or what it was when the house was added to the National Register, or what it looked like just before the storm damage. You know, I don't, my opinion is that no, I don't think that what's here could really be modified to look as appropriate as what it should have been designed to look like had they done it from scratch. Um, I think that a lot of things can be done to make it look more appropriate than it does now. I don't know if the Landmarks Commission would find those modifications to be acceptable or not. Um, it's just a very unfortunate circumstance where somebody had a, an opportunity to not only use, say, the loan fund or state tax credits to the tune of 25%, and we had the architectural plans very readily accessible, someone went and did something else. And, you know, at this point, it's sort of like maybe trying to make a Volkswagen look like a Porsche. Um, some people like doing that. I don't know if the Landmarks Commission would find that acceptable here or not. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's all I have at this time. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. All right, I'd entertain a motion to go into closed session. Alder Lefebvre and open. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, my understanding is that anybody who is in a historic district, they have to, if they want to do any work on the house, they have to apply for a permit. Is that right? Um, your work requires a certificate of appropriateness outside from general maintenance. Uh, what about additions? Yes, that would require certificate of appropriateness and a building permit. Okay. All right, thank you. I make a motion. Move to, to go to closed session. Second. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Alder Scannell makes a motion to go into closed session. That was seconded by Alder Dorf. Uh, can someone read the language? Sure. The council may convene in closed session pursuant to section 19.85, subsection 1, subsection A, Wisconsin statutes for purposes of case which was the subject of any judicial or quasi-judicial trial or hearing before that governmental body. The council will thereafter reconvene in open session pursuant to section 18.85, subsection 2, Wisconsin statutes, to take action on items discussed in closed session if appropriate, and to consider the remainder of the agenda. All right, we will use the board. Thank you, Alders, you may vote. And Alder Galvin. Sorry. Alder Galvin, can you uh, either vote or tell me how you'd like to be recorded? Yeah, Celestine, nothing came up on my screen, but I vote yes. Thank you so much. And here is your displayed vote. And that vote is unanimous, so we will move into closed session. Uh, is it, um, Attorney Bungard, is it just members of council and yourself? Open session? Yes, everyone okay. is back in the room. Okay, great. So Attorney or, um, Alder Dorf makes a motion to return to the regular order of business. Was, was that seconded? Second. Seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. We are back in open session. Alder Dorf. I'd like to move to accept the findings of fact and conclusions of law as discussed in closed session. Second. 
Alder Dorf makes a motion to accept the findings of fact and conclusions of law. That was seconded by Alder Gerlach. So I will read the findings of fact and conclusions of law, and then we will have a vote on that. Findings of fact and conclusions of law. This matter came before the Green Bay Common Council on January 18, 2022. This appeal was brought by Mr. Steve Olson, the property owner of the home located at 137 North Oakland Avenue in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Purpose of the hearing was to determine whether the Landmarks Commission denial of Mr. Olson's application for a certificate of appropriateness, COA, was proper or whether the denial should be reversed and approved. Findings of fact. One, this matter was heard by the Green Bay Common Council on January 18, 2022. Two, a hearing was held by the parties, which included evidence presented by City of Green Bay staff and the appellant Steve Olson did not appear. <clears throat> Three, the relevant ordinance in deciding this appeal is section 14-1552 of the Green Bay Four, section 14-1552, sub two, sub A, Green Bay Municipal Code states that, quote, no owner or person in charge of a designated historic structure shall reconstruct, alter, or demolish all or any part of the exterior of such property or construct any improvement upon such property or cause or permit any such work to be performed upon such property or demolish such property unless a certificate of appropriateness, COA has been granted. A COA is a certificate issued by the LC, the Landmarks Commission, the Director of Community and Economic Development, or their designee, approving alteration, rehabilitation, construction, reconstruction, or demolition of a designated historic structure, designated historic site, or a site or, site or structure located in a designated historic district. Unless a COA has been granted, the Development Services Manager shall not issue a permit for any such work." End quote. Five, section 14-1552, sub two, sub B, Green Bay Municipal Code states that in relevant part, one, in the case of a designated historic structure or designated historic site, the proposed work would detrimentally change, destroy, or adversely affect any exterior feature of the improvement or site upon which said work is to be done. Two, in the case of construction of a new improvement upon a designated historic site or within a designated historic district, the exterior of such improvement would adversely affect or not harmonize with the external appearance of other neighboring improvements on such site or within the district Three, in the case of any property located in a designated historic district, the proposed construction, reconstruction, exterior alteration, or demolition does not conform to the purpose and intent of this article and Division 5 of Article 2 of this chapter, or to the objectives and design criteria of the historic preservation plan for said district. Six, Section 14-1552, sub 2, sub G, Green Bay Municipal Code states in relevant part, when work or demolition has been done upon a designated historic structure, designated historic site, or structure within a designated historic district without a COA, and the LC finds that the work or demolition requires a COA but does not qualify for a COA, that work or demolition constitutes a violation of this article, and the LC may require the owner to restore the structure or site to the condition the structure or site was in before the inappropriate work was conducted, or modify the work so that it qualifies for a COA. Any owner who fails to restore work or demolition as ordered by the LC in accordance with this section shall forfeit not less than $1 nor more than $1,000. Any owner who violates this section within 24 months after committing a previous violation of this section shall forfeit not less than $200 nor more than $2,000. Six, the property at issue is 137 North Oakland Avenue, Green Bay, Wisconsin. It has been on the National Register of Historic Places since 1988. Seven, the property owner of record is Steve Olson. Eight, the property at 137 North Oakland Sustained storm damage to the second story porch during the summer of 2021. <clears throat> Nine, on July 20, 2021, the inspections division informed the property owner that a certificate of appropriateness is required before any work can be completed on a historical building. Eight, 2021, inspections division noticed that a replaced porch had been constructed on the home. Eleven, no building permits or a COA had been issued for the property. Twelve, Mr. Olson's COA application was received on October 26, 2021. 13, uh, November 7, denied Mr. Olson's COA application because the design of the porch does not conform to accepted standards for repairs to historical structures and because the design more consistent with the original porch was possible. Conclusions of law. One, this grievance is properly before the section of 44-1552 sub 3 of the Green Bay Municipal Code. A hearing on this matter was timely 
was timely conducted in accordance with section 44-1552 sub three Green Bay Municipal Code. Three, Mr. Olson performed repair work to his private North Oakland, Green Bay, Wisconsin, wherein he replaced a porch that was damaged in a storm without obtaining a COA prior to performing such work in accordance with section 44-1552 sub two sub A Green Bay Municipal Code. Four, by performing such work, Mr. Olson violated the provisions of section 44-1552 sub two sub G sub two Green Bay Municipal Code. Five, the denial of the COA is proper and is hereby sustained. Six, the appellant Mr. Olson is required to restore the structure to the condition it was in prior to the storm damage and to the inappropriate work being conducted or to modify the work so that it does qualify for a COA. So we have a motion and a second will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. And that item has been dispensed with. We're now on item two of committee of the whole. Entertain a motion. I move to approve. Motion to approve, made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Scannell. Any discussion? Seeing I think none. Just, oh, I thought Alder Gerlach had a amendment. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, okay. there is one. I'm sorry. There is one um, typo in the amendment that needs, uh, in the resolution that needs to be corrected. And I should remember this, Attorney Bungard, but is it better to get to the resolutions or should we deal with the amendment now? And I was one second, I was just trying to find my way back to the Zoom uh, window. Um, it can be dealt with at committee as a whole to make the amendment, and then the resolution will be adopted as amended um, pursuant to the action taken under the committee item. Okay. Go ahead, Alder Gerlach. Okay. In the fourth whereas clause, the word resident should be changed to reside. Somali former refugees now reside in this community. Is there a second? I second that. Amendment was offered by Alder Gerlach, seconded by Alder Dorr. Discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That amendment has been adopted. Um, move to, well, I think I already moved a motion. Okay. We'll, we'll entertain a motion to approve as adopted. Um, move okay. to approve as adopted. Or as amended. As amended. As amended, sorry. Second. That was offered by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Gerlach. Discussion? Uh, Alder Brunette. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I just want it to be known that earlier today I had a discussion with the city attorney questioning whether or not I should abstain from the vote. I'm not abstaining. I support the motion. Um, I'm not in any way, you know, it. it it's these conflicts we're always in the, the resolutions in support of the Afghan refugees in the community, not necessarily settlement organization. I, of course, am connected via employment, but there's no financial ramifications uh, of the resolution whatsoever. So in good faith and conscience, I see no reason why I should abstain from the vote. So I'll be supporting it. Okay. Any other comments? All right, we do have a motion on the floor and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed aye. nay. The ayes have it. And that item has been approved as amended. On to the report of the Redevelopment Authority. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Scannell. Was there a second? Second by Alder Dorf. Seconded by Alder Dorf. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor will sign. Alder Johnson, was that a? Alder Johnson? No. Uh, Alder Stoyer? No, Somebody's I'm, muted. Uh, all right. Not Sorry, hearing I anymore. apologize for that. I just was wondering if we could be heard here. That's all. That's it. Thank you. Uh, can you repeat that, Alder Stoyer? <laughs> not in the room if we want to second something us sitting here if we can do that and Mike is saying that we can Mr. Ronick but I just don't feel like we can we can talk correct all right 
Do I have to raise hand? Everything's good. Never mind. I'm good. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, all in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That report has been adopted. A report of the Improvement and Services Committee. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Gerlach, seconded by Alder Scannell. Any items here to be handled separately? Hearing none. All in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. On to protection policy. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Any items here to be handled separately? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Approved. Protection and Policy Committee granting operator licenses. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Alder Scannell, seconded by Corpus Dax. Any names to be handled separately or abstentions? Seeing none, all in favor of signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. Finance Committee. Motion to approve. Uh, approve. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Dorf. Items here to be handled separately. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Report has been approved. Park Committee. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax. Items here to be handled separately. Number one. Number one. Any others? Item one will be handled separately. Others all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of item one. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve item one made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax. That item was pulled by Alder Johnson. You have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to make a motion to add a contingency to this that um, that this box be covered in in some type of artistic wrap approved uh, by our public arts coordinator. Second that. Second that. Right. There's a motion been made by Alder Johnson to require that. Um, that this piece of equipment is wrapped in public art approved by the Public Arts Commission. That was seconded by Alder Burnett. Uh, comments on the, on the motion? Mayor, the, if I may, the, the one thing I would add is, I mean, this is obviously, we have a number of these utility boxes that are going up. I think we have a desire to, to add more public art in our community. And I think this is uh, an easy way to do it where we're obviously lending the use of our property, city owned property. Um, so I, th I think it's perfectly within the realm of, of our request to say that this utility box that normally would really not fit inside of a park environment, um, that, that we do what we can to appropriately um, enhance the beautification or, or disguise really the unsightliness of it. Um, it, you know, the one thing within the motion, I, I mentioned public arts coordinator. Um, I, I'm certainly comfortable with this going through to the public arts commission. The only reason I said coordinator though, is because if this is a timely installation that is required by the vendor, I just wanted the ability to have that decision made at a staff level, if there's not sufficient enough time to go in front of the commission. Thanks Alder. Uh, Alder Burnett, did you have? Yeah, I, I have some comments, but I see, uh, Attorney Mather uh, activated her screen here. So it looks like she probably wants to say something. I know for sure Director Kinnear probably wants to say something about this. I yeah. would encourage uh, and the staff. Uh, right. let's, let's go with uh, Director Grenier first. He's got a lot, a lot of ex expertise with working with utilities operating in our, in our rights away and on public property. So with that, Director Grenier. Uh, actually, I was going to defer to Assistant Attorney Mather, but uh, I'll take it first. We have had discussions with TDS about this. Um, I don't know that we could require, we could request, but I don't think we can require that may be a foul of Public Service Commission uh, state statute. Um, one thing that we should keep in mind, they are requesting to put, or the, the request is to be within a, an easement <coughs> area within the park. Um, that is at city preference. If we put restrictions on that they are that TDS is not comfortable with, they have statutory right to move into the public right of way instead. 
and have absolutely no restriction. So I understand what the intent is here. I would caution against uh, having hard and fast requirements and instead uh, would caution the council to adopt a request uh, approach instead. There are, I believe, somewhere between 16 and 20 of these installations that will be going in in Green Bay across the next three years along with 505 mile, 502 miles of underground fiber optic cable being fed. Okay, thanks Director Grenier. Attorney Mather. Thanks Mayor. Um, I just uh, was going to say a lot of what uh, Director Grenier just said, but also um, I don't know that our office has had experience yet working with the, these specific types of ins installations, but I know other um, city attorney offices across the state have, and they've said for various reasons, um, the, the companies have come back and said that um, things like art or even um, strict requirements about uh, landscaping screening around these um, boxes, if you will, um, <clears throat> can, um, are often fought by the uh, the companies simply because they have statutory requirements with respect to ease of access, and um, it a lot of places have uh, a lot of the attorneys have said that they literally have, the companies have literally said it has to be a white box. So I would second what um, Director Grenier said, and basically. I think it's a good suggestion, and to the extent that it's possible, I think it's a great recommendation, um, but I would also avoid a hard and fast rule. Okay, thanks, Attorney Mather. Uh, Alder Brunette? Yeah, I, I mean, I'll leave it up to direct um, Alderman Johnson if he wants to amend his motion, but even still, I support the current motion. I had a little bit of experience with this, uh, along with Director Grenier, and if you watch the committee meetings, you probably heard my comments in that there was a situation where many homeowners uh, in Alderman Vanderlee's district were very upset with some of the work that the utility companies were doing, the above ground boxes, enough of the neighborhood residents of a commotion that the utility company conceded and, and buried the utility underground, mostly, I should say. Now, this is a little different in that the work has to be above grade, so that that's what's going to require the box. Uh, I think this is a gesture of good faith on their part that they would accommodate this. Keep in mind, Hinas Ra, beautiful park, one of the few natural areas, wooded areas that we have in the city of Green Bay. People go to that park to recreate, to kind of remove them Synology. They enter the park, they see one of these big boxes, and if we can make it a little more natural, a little more appealing, I think it's worth worth trying. And of course, TDS or whoever the subcontractor can come back to us and say out of the question, but kind of put that on them. I, I would hope that they would make a reasonable concession towards public art for the reasons stated. Uh, they've been, you know, we all are benefiting from high-speed internet. I don't want to be hypocritical. We are benefiting by virtue of even having this meeting by high-speed internet. So these things are coming. Well, hopefully the utilities will work with Green Bay, especially in areas of public parks that are few and far between in the city of Green Bay. So I support the motion. If Alderman Johnson wants to concede and make a lesser stringent motion, I'd support that as well. Thanks, Alder Scannell. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, I, I, I think I'd rather a uh, less uh, restrictive motion. And I'm also uh, wondering if in that motion, are we expecting the company to fund the art? Or are we expecting their source, that they're just getting their permission, so to speak, to uh, do wraparound art? I wonder if Walter Johnson has any, uh, or if the mayor could uh, look into that somehow. <laughs> I need to speak to the chair. Uh, on that, sure. We uh, Alder Johnson, any any comments on that? Yeah, I mean, Mayor, and I don't want to necessarily take the floor from from someone else who might be in the queue, but I am certainly amenable to 
modifying the motion. Um, I, I spoke with Director Ditchheit earlier today and expressed that same sentiment that if, if the motion were uh, not in compliance with um, you know, what state laws would dictate or, or what the Public Service Commission would require that I would certainly be open to that. So um, if, if, if it's not out of order, I would modify my motion right now um, to take Director Grenier's recommendation and, and request um, that they in include uh, some type of public art wrap around this with an additional uh, request on that motion that we direct city staff uh, to initiate a conversation with them, particularly since they are adding more of these units throughout the city to see if that we can secure um, perhaps a one-time grant uh, that would be given to our uh, Public Arts Commission to help direct or guide the wrapping of additional units that were to come into service and then report back at a meeting in a month or two whenever those conversations can be had uh, to determine what the outcome of that conversation is. Okay, thanks Alder, is there a second for that? I'll second. Seconded by Alder Burnett. Got a ton of people in the queue. Alder Lefebvre and then Alder Gerlach. Um, yes, I'll support <clears throat> modification to that motion. I think that's appropriate. I hope the company would work with it, but I would think like in the in a park that we own, city park, that after installation we could probably put some screening up that would not in hinder them going in and maintaining it, but we could probably put some screening up. So I think that the park would, would again, look more natural. Alder, uh, Alder Gerlach. Uh, as the chair of the Public Arts Commission, I would just like to ask that perhaps we could um, make this even a little bit less restrictive and we could suggest either art, some kind of planting or, because uh, I don't know if the rest of you have seen a picture of this thing. And if you know the dimensions and uh, other parks committee uh, members can correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's like 10 feet square. This is a big thing and it's not particularly attractive in my opinion, but I don't know if wrapping it with art is going to be the answer, but perhaps if we have the option of art or some kind of planting, um, that might work. Okay, Alder Burnett. Yeah, one, uh, thank you, Mayor. One thing I'd recommend as a possible partnership is that, keep in mind, this is a City of Green Bay Park. It is owned by the City of Green Bay, but it's on the Oneida Reservation. So this could be a real good partnership with the Oneida uh, Nation to kind of bring in something uh, of their culture, their heritage, you know, as a partnership with the City of Green Bay and perhaps, you know, help co-design something that could kind of draw attention. Oneida, obviously, the, the Oneida tribe and most all Indian tribes, you know, value natural resources and the environment. And if we can call in with partnership with them through public art, I think it's a wonderful opportunity. I can't imagine a public uh, a utility would be against such a partnership. So I would just encourage chair, if this passes, uh, uh, Alder Gearlock, you know, kind of approach the Oneida tribe to see if they would, they would work city and the public arts commission to, to propose something. Yep. Okay. Any other comments? And do we do we need to ask the author yet again um, if he's interested in modifying the motion to encompass what's been discussed? I, I think I'd prefer to leave the motion as is, uh, simply because I've seen landscaping screenings and they're just quite frankly not as effective. Okay, so the motion is as it is, uh, Alder Scannell. Yeah, I'd just like to add that, you know, uh, there have been boxes of this similar size that have been wrapped around with art. So, um, and I think they look pretty good. So I think going with art um, is actually gives a better option to go than just plantings. I mean, we it, it involves the community more. It, 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 it activates our artistic community more. I think it's more productive. So I, I would, Rather, we went with the, the art end. Okay. Alder Gerlach? Just, I just want to um, make sure that, uh, are we understanding that if we uh, pass this as amended, 
that we are instructing our public arts coordinator to do this? And I mean, is that, mm -hmm. is she, does she have any choice in the matter? Does she, can she say this is impossible? I, I'm a little bit concerned about that. Director Grenier. The permitting in for the entirety of TDS is 502 miles of fiber optic is being handled by the Department of Public Works. So I would suggest that you have us work with uh, the public arts coordinator, but have all the communication routed through DPW for a single point of contact. Makes sense to me. Any other comments? Okay, we have an amendment um, and a second. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Entertain a motion to approve as amended. Motion to approve as amended. Second. Motion to approve as amended made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. And that report has been dispensed with. On to the report of the personnel committee. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Corpus Dax, seconded by Alder Scannell. Any items being held separately? Two. Item two. Any others? Item two will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of the report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of item two. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Item two made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. The item was pulled by Alder Dorf. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to explain to the council members that weren't present at, at the personnel committee that um, th this wasn't an action item on the personnel agenda. So what eventually happened was um, we sent it to council as an item to refer to staff because there must be an ordinance created for this. And if someone wants to explain that better than, than I just did, like the attorney Mather or perhaps Director Falls, um, we have it here before you, but we want you to understand that when it comes back, it'll come back as an ordinance that we will approve or not approve. Is that right. correct, Director Falls? Yeah, that's a good, good, good question for Director Falds or um, or our city attorney's office. Um, and then it would it'd be helpful to have either um, Chief Falds or Attorney Bungert or Mather discuss um, some of the statutory requirements in these instances. Yeah, I can start. Um, so that's correct, Elder Dorf, that it is it will come back as an ordinance for the whole council to vote on, to approve or amend and at the February 1st meeting. And then also there was this discussion on the removal of um, appointed officials by the council. And it's a pretty short answer to that. And attorney Mather can jump in too, but the state statute precludes the council from amending that, the amending the amount of votes for removal. The state statute states that it has to be three fourths of the council to remove. And the confusion and, and why that occurred was in other municipalities, when someone, excuse me, when a common council appoints an official, they then can remove at the pleasure of the council. So if that's the case, then you still need a vote, but then they can decide if it's majority, two thirds or three fourths or unanimous. So that's why there was some confusion at the last meeting, but the statute requires a three fourths vote. Okay. Thank you, Director Falls. Any discussion on that? Uh, Alder Weary. I'm going to make a motion to receive and place on file. All right. Is there a second for that motion? Seeing no second, the okay. motion fails. Yeah, um, I, I do think this is a, an unnecessary move. It actually, any anytime we take away power from the council, I don't think for a good reason. Why would we voluntarily give up? some of our ability and, and power. That's beyond me. I, you know, I listened to the meeting. You didn't have to recap it for me, but I appreciate it. I, I watched it. Um, I think this just strengthens the mayor's role and weakens the council is basically what it does. Um, 
So I think we should just leave it the way it is. Every two years, people get nominated. These are appointments. These are not anointments. You know, once you get the role, it doesn't mean you get it for life. And then it's very difficult to remove you. You should be earning this. And then every two years, you earn it again. That was the purpose for having that. So if you want to weaken the council, go ahead and do that. But I think it's the wrong way to go. Thanks. Thanks, Alder. Alder. Good oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I don't think it takes away power from the council. In fact, it empowers the council more. As far as I can tell, I don't think the council uh, ever uh, had uh, uh, a role in um, removing someone from office for, for cause. Uh, and that certainly is still there, even if we did before. Uh, so I think that's that's where, uh, for me, the real power so lies. For me, uh, generally, this has been, uh, for the council, an exercise in rubber stamping. you got to have a pretty good reason for uh, uh, not doing so without risking uh, a lawsuit. Um, so I don't see it as empowering the mayor's office at all. And as long as the the council still has the power to uh, remove someone for cause, and why else would you need to remove them? Why do they need to keep, I think it, it's a good move to help retain quality help. Who wants to be working with uh, their job on the line every two years? How can you, I think it's a, a, a smart move. And I think it uh, doesn't belittle the council at all. Thank you. Thanks Alder. Alder Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Obviously, having been on the council longer than anybody here, I do remember a time when a city clerk was put forward and defeated by the city council, and that's how Tr Chris Teske got her role, because the original person put forward did not get it. it was not, so it's, it's not rubber stamping. We just saw that, I think, two years ago, we had a pretty good discussion, uh, you know, about an you know, administrative person, and... Uh, once, once they're approved, if you have to do three-fourths, four cause, that is so much tougher than every two years you just reappoint. And if there's something that that department head's not doing that's noticeable enough to get a majority of the council to not approve it, I think that's the way you should go. Otherwise, you're really creating a, a big obstacle to try and, and, and move one out of that position. And that's not what those are meant to be. So just my opinion. Thanks, Alder. Any questions? All right. And so it looks like we probably would need to indicate that it would not be a majority vote um, in the in the case of the removal for cause. Okay, so I, I I would like to amend that it would go to a three quarters vote, or is that how you would say it? Correct. Okay. Well, These guys are okay. Attorney Mather. Yeah, Attorney Mather. Go ahead. Oh. So, um, as was noted at the committee level, um, the the voting requirement for removal for cause is not actually in the ordinance. That was provided as part of the memo, just as an explanation based on some comments that had come up at a previous personnel committee meeting. Um, so the ordinance as it stands does not include any language about the, re the um, fraction of council that has to vote for removal, it merely contains a reference to state statutes, and that's where that three fourths number is found. Okay, so, so we could simply <laughs> remove the by majority language from the. Yeah, so if you just um, basically make it refer to staff to, you know, just take that language off entirely, um, we'll essentially be bringing back the exact same ordinance um, to personnel as an action item. Okay. And uh, Director Fultz? Yes, so you could amend it to um, take out the removal by majority and have it rem removal in accordance with Wisconsin statutes, and then we'll have the specific statutes in the ordinance. Okay, great. I'd like to make the motion that it would be removal according to Wisconsin statute. Um, okay. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Alder. On that motion, Alder Gerlach? Um, excuse my confusion, but... Could you please just state exactly what it is we are now voting on? I'm, I'm very confused about this. 
Yep, so this is uh, item two under the personnel committee report, which is a motion to refer to staff to repeal and recreate Green Bay Municipal Code 2-79 and 2-81 to include indefinite terms for appointed officials. So currently uh, these appointed officials are on a two year cycle um, and need to be appointed and confirmed every two years. This would make these appointments indefinite, but would still maintain the ability for council to remove these officials for cause. Okay, and the only difference the amendment makes is how many council members it takes to do it. Right, and, just, and that's just a recognition of what's required in state statute. Okay, thank you. So we have a mo uh, an amendment and a second. All in favor, we'll signify. Yeah. Uh, Our Alder Green? Alder Johnson is waving. Yep. Alder Johnson. Yep. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to, you know, I'm going to support the motion because obviously whatever we do here in terms of drafting the ordinance needs to be in compliance with state law. The one request I would have if Director Falds could email the entire council uh, the, the actual language from that state statute and then admittedly, uh, Director Falds, I'm not sure that I totally followed your explanation about why these other communities have that. So if you could just, again, it's irrelevant today. But if you could just uh, kind of capture that and send that to council just so that I've got the ability to kind of understand that a little bit more effectively. Yeah, I'll, I'll send that in writing. Thank you. Yeah. Any other discussion? Record it, please. You'd like recorded, Alder Weary? Uh, no, final vote, thanks. Okay. So this is on the amendment. All in favor will signify aye. 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 Opposed nay. And I'll entertain a motion to approve as amended. Motion to approve as amended. Second. Motion to approve as amended made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax. Uh, on that motion, Alder Brunette. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I, I agree with Alderman Weary's uh, line of thinking. I think that there are a few powers that, as a body, the City Council has, one of which is approving the appointments of the Mayor for boards and commissions, as well as senior city staff and I, I think that anytime you have as a council the ability to remove uh, department heads every two years I think that's a good thing because it holds and this is no disrespect to any department head I've had good interactions with all of the current department heads but it keeps the department heads accountable not just to the mayor who is their direct supervisor or the body of the people the city of Green Bay through their city council members so every two years, if there are senior staff department heads that are not responsive to the emails, not responsive to phone calls, perhaps is conducting themselves in a way that alders don't feel very good towards the public, then it is a right to remove them or not affirm their appointment to the, 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 the staff for another two years. So I agree with Alderman Weary. I, I know we don't want to think on to believe that every city staff here and now until the future, you know, is not, not doing anything that's improper or that they're all performing at the public nature is that that's not always the case. So I, I, I'm a voting against the motion. Thanks, Alder. Alder Galvin and then Alder Dorp. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I guess we believe in a process, some of us in council, which doesn't afford uh, the people that we have working for us the right to defend themselves. How, how unfair is it to let someone go to a council meeting and then ambush them with a vote to remove them from their job with no recourse? I, 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 I don't get it. Even elected officials have months to state their case, but we're going to let these directors walk into a meeting not knowing if their job is secure or not. Because I could see some council members ambushing directors and trying to remove them from their jobs and not giving them any recourse except for trying to come up with a defense at the last second at some meeting. And I, that doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem American to me to do that to people. Everybody in this country is afforded the opportunity to defend themselves when they're accused of something wrong. And yet we're not gonna do that here. And I. I'm embarrassed. Thank you. So Alder, Alder Dork. Thank you. So I, I also believe in due process. Um, I also believe in that 
any mayor that we would have if there were complaints coming forth to that mayor that that mayor as the supervisor would be taking the proper action to provide a plan of assistance to redirect to guide to make sure that that, that director that's appointed does his job to the best of his ability or her ability um i am totally in favor of this motion for another or for the for this ordinance for another reason because i think we will get more quality candidates people that have to reapply basically for their job every two years to face a council that may be the same council, may be a different council, who knows for what reasons they might have 12 different people deciding, well, we're, we're going to get rid of a director. And as, as Alder Galvin stated, just at the drop of a hat, just at the, in a meeting, no. I don't agree with that at all. I think we will get better quality candidates that people will want to serve in the city of Green Bay in in those director positions. <clears throat> and I'm in, uh, uh, well, because I made the motion, but I'm 100% in favor of having the indefinite terms for appointed officials and common council. Uh, or, I'm sorry, for, for thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Gerlach, and then I think Alder Weary. For what it's worth, uh, it was less than two years ago that I started this job, my very first um, introduction to government and being an elected official. And uh, at my first or second meeting, we were reappointing directors and I was stunned to find out that we were going to reappoint these, these leaders to their job every two years. In all of my working life, I had never heard of such a thing before. Mm-hmm. And as I've worked with these people, I have found that we are so fortunate to have the quality of leadership we have in all of our departments. And I agree with Alderdorf. I think we undermine that by constantly keeping then wondering if they're gonna be reappointed. I just think it's unprofessional and not smart. I definitely would would agree that this is the, uh, the route we should go. Thanks, Alder. Alder Weir? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just want to remind everybody that these are appointments. They're called appointments. They're not anointments. We're not anointing people. We're appointing them. We've had, what, 100 plus years of history using this, and what, 99.9% of them get appointed. But it gives the ability for counsel, majority of counsel, not one or two or three or four disgruntled people, as some people are here saying, it would take a majority of a council to see something's wrong and to try and change it. To do anything, you would need to convince a majority of the council. And as we've seen in our history, that doesn't happen very rarely. But we have that option. That, that a, why would we give that up? Why? It's no sense whatsoever just to hand over that ability. Um, we should really rename this the DHPA, the Department Head Protection Act. I think we should do that if you pass it. Thanks. Any other comments? All right, a recorded vote was requested, so we will use the board. Thank you, Alders. You may vote. Nothing coming up. Sign in. Alder Stoyer? Okay. How would you like to be recorded, Alder Stoyer? Did it go? go? Okay. Uh, Thank you. I have your vote. Here is your displayed vote. And that succeeds nine to three. We are now on to the report of the Public Arts Commission. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Gerlach. Any discussion? Mayor, item one. Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I've had some uh, conversations today with our public arts coordinator as well as uh, Alder Gerlach. Uh, 
as, as the chair of this commission and I would like to within the RFQ and I would defer to staff on how to uh, appropriately word this um, you know one of the things I think that kind of caught my attention was the uh, the eighty thousand dollars being allocated for the artists and I just wanted to better understand you know how much area was going to be be covered within this and after uh, some conversation with staff I discovered that it essentially it would be eight pillars and there's a total of 22 uh, 22 pillars uh, underneath that structure and it's it's the desire and intent to eventually get all 22 covered um, but obviously eighty thousand dollars is only going to cover eight and so we were brainstorming some ideas on how we could make those uh, those dollars go further and I think we came up with a reasonable solution that uh, at least uh, the public arts coordinator and I both agreed would make sense and I'd like to offer it as an amendment um, that essentially all that eighty thousand dollars should cover all 22 pillars uh, however instead of having it wrap the entire pillar that it would just be the front and the back as part of the RFQ and and, uh, and and so that would be the motion really is just to to ensure that all 22 pillars are covered um, and then just as a kind of more of a, a point of information uh, what I did offer is because this is in the uh, Broadway District Business Improvement District I did offer that our organization could help secure uh, volunteers that could also uh, provide assistance with providing the labor to prime and uh, paint the, the the sides of those which would not be covered as part of the RFQ so uh, I think it's a good solution moving forward so my motion again would be to ensure that front and backs of all 22 pillars are included in that RFQ and then just a quick question or clarification for my benefit I guess it is front and back east and west or north and south uh, yes front and back uh, uh, sorry <laughs> east and west <laughs> okay Okay, got it. Which is the Dirk. which is the wider portion of the pillar? Okay, got it. Thank you, Alder or um, Director Grenier. My understanding is this is simply a request for artists to submit um, essentially concept mock-ups of what they would be putting out there, not the actual installation at this point, because until we get until we get the mock-ups and submit those to Wisconsin Department of Transportation, there's no guarantee that anything can go on those pillars. That's subject to their review and approval. So we need to have a call for artists and get what the concept and a mock-up of any of those pillars might look like. And then each pillar or grouping of pillars needs to be permitted independently uh, through WSDOT. So I, I don't know that we're necessarily moving forward with allocation of funds or anything at this point in time. Uh, at least we shouldn't be, and that was the direction that was given to the public arts coordinator. We need to get mock-ups of what the art is going to look like on each of the individual pillars and then, in, and then submit that for approval through DOD before so we give any funds to anything. That, that's very helpful, I think. Given what Director Grenier has stated is, is the direction simply to have mock-ups for all all 22 pillars? Yeah, it, Mayor, none of that is changing with, with my motion. It's uh, and, and that is my understanding as well, what Director Grenier said, and that's what's outlined in the RFQ. The only thing that's changing is, I think, an expectation uh, which exists right now of doing eight pillars and really the expectation being that we're going to do all 22. Okay. May I second any, this motion? Yeah, you bet. Any other um, or input from Deputy Director Rainier Wig or Director Sexualty? No, I, that's. I believe that's correct, Alder Johnson. It's really, it's really going to make what's going to happen with the RFP is there'll be more pillars covered, with perhaps a less detailed mural or design. So, but it'll have more coverage, and that's your goal. It sounds like. So we can do that. Okay, and so um, we'd still be selecting up to eight finalists, the number of artists involved, that, that all stays the same, is that correct? Alder Gerlach? I, I believe so. I, I just wanted to say that uh, I appreciate um, Alder Johnson um, brought this um, to my attention earlier and I was able to talk with staff, including our, our public arts coordinator, and I feel comfortable with this. I see what he's trying to do, there is always start the project and then we don't have funding to finish it in the future that might be a problem 
Um, the public arts coordinator has assured me that she has worked with the um, on Broadway people before and that she can work with them and get this done. She's comfortable with it. I'm comfortable with it. I think we should go ahead with it. Sounds good. Thanks for those comments. And your second on the amendment. Um, so the amendment is uh, is basically just directing staff to make sure that we have mock-ups to cover all of the pillars underneath the, uh, the Tillman Bridge there. Um, do we have, or it, it, all in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Nay. You guys have it that it's been amended. Entertain a motion. Motion to approve as amended. Second. Second. Motion to approve as amended, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Gerlach. Any discussion on that? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those nay, the ayes have it. That report has been approved. Receive in place on file. Motion to receive in place on file. Second. Motion has been made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens, to receive in place on file the building report for December 21 and municipal court report for December 21. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. On to resolutions. Motion to suspend the rules. And since we amended uh, resolution five, do we need to take that separately? Or, um, or is that not necessary, Attorney Bungert? That's not necessary. Okay. Yep. Very good. So, um, Alder Scannell, make motion, accept uh, accept uh, number five. Uh, Attorney Bungert said that's not necessary. Oh, nine is old. Then motion to suspend the rules. Okay. Second. Alder Scannell uh, makes a motion to suspend the rules and take up these resolutions, all these resolutions with one roll call vote. That was seconded by Alder Gerlach. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Pose nay. Do you guys have it? The rules are suspended. Move to adopt. Second. Motion to adopt made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Scannell. Any comments? We will use the board. Thank you, Alders. You may vote. And Alder Brunette, how would you like to be recorded? I voted yes. Oh, thank you. Yes, just, I see. Just Here's your displayed vote. And those resolutions are adopted unanimously, 12-0. On to ordinances first reading. Motion to advance. Motion to advance made by Alder Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alder Lefebvre. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 You guys have it that ordinance has, had, that ordinance has been advanced to a second and final reading. Petitions and communications. Adjournment. Motion to adjourn it. Second. Motion to adjourn made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Door. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Close nay. The ayes have it. We're adjourned. Aye. Thank you so much, everyone. Go, Pat, go. Okay. Good night.